Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and I've got an exciting update in regards to tropical cyclone season 2025-26, which is just days away from starting across the northern waters of Australia. We are expecting another cracker season. Lots of severe tropical cyclone activity and strong signals of land falling tropical cyclones through Queensland and Western Australia. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things with a look at the drivers that are going to be influencing this bumper tropical cyclone season, which runs officially between November 1st out to April 30th every single year. So this is a look at the Bureau of Meteorology on the old website, by the way, uh, the Bureau of Meteorology's current uh, ocean monitoring uh, uh, service. So we're looking at sea temperatures here, including the forecast and the monitoring, and also our indices, so our Nino 3.4 index, and also our uh, Indian Ocean Dipole monitoring as well, which is strongly in the negative. So we've got two of those negative drivers, that La Nina, which means that those sea temperatures are well below average in the Pacific, which is very favorable for tropical cyclone activity around Australia. And we've also got that negative Indian Ocean Dipole as well. And what that means is sea temperatures are well above average. In fact, they are now on the boil offshore from Australia. And if we zoom in here into the Australian region, you can really see how warm some of those sea temperatures are. In fact, in spots two to three degrees above average over in the Coral Sea, and about one to two degrees, generally speaking, above average in the West Australian regions. And they're only getting warmer as well. If we push things back, these sea temperatures were a lot cooler just a few weeks ago. They're continuing to increase above that uh, long-term average baseline. And that's forecast continue as we get out towards November with temperatures sharply rising now over mainland Australia as well. Now, as we know, warmer sea temperatures result in an increased amount of convection and low pressure system activity across our waters. And that's what sparks, that's the driving factor behind these tropical cyclones. And that is why we are expecting, again, such a bumper season in terms of tropical cyclone activity. And coupling that with, of course, that La Nina slash cool neutral that we're now beginning to uh, enter here. In fact, we are expecting La Nina conditions to develop in a very weak manner uh, as we get out towards December with those sea temperatures in the Pacific dipping well below the long-term average now, particularly in the Nino 3.4 uh, region, which is indicative of a La Nina that's beginning to develop. And again, cooler sea temperatures over in the western half of the Indian Ocean, which is indicative of a negative Indian Ocean dipole. Both uh, factors are very favorable in regards to developing tropical cyclones. It's all coming together now for a significantly above average tropical cyclone season. And if we couple that with a look at upper level wind shear as well, which we can now do fa uh, thanks to some of the uh, extremely powerful forecast modeling techniques, you can see that these blues here indicate below average wind shear. And this runs pretty much right through tropical cyclone season across northern Australia. Wind shear is expected to be below average to substantially below average starting right now and running right through the duration of tropical cyclone season, particularly into the Coral Sea and offshore from the northern waters of Western Australia. And again, wind shear is a hostile factor to tropical cyclones, to, to, so to see it below average is definitely a concerning sight to see at this time of the year. Now that it's below average on the forecast, I'm very confident in saying that whatever tropical cyclones do develop, coupling that with those warm sea temperatures, they are going to be strong and much stronger than they usually are. In fact, over the last couple of years, we've seen an increasing trend in uh, severe tropical cyclone numbers. In fact, they now make up about half of all tropical cyclones in the Australian cyclone season, compared to about 35% just a few decades ago. So whilst our tropical cyclone numbers are decreasing over the last couple of years, we've seen an average uh, of tropical cyclone numbers drop from about 10 in a, calendar, in a tropical cyclone season down to about seven or eight bar last season, which was actually an average compared to the long-term uh, situation. Uh, we are expecting these conditions to continue favoring severe tropical cyclone activity. Activity. So the key takeaway is less tropical cyclones, but more severe tropical cyclones, which means whatever storms are developing are going to become strong. Now, this is a look at tropical cyclone totals compared to the El Nino Southern Oscillation Graph. So the blue indicates La Nina, and you can see when we have a La Nina, we generally expect a spike in tropical cyclone numbers. And again, as we are now entering into another La Nina based season, we are also going to be looking at another spike in tropical cyclones. You can also see that long term decrease in tropical cyclone activity over the past uh, couple of decades. So this is since 1980, where the average was at 12 tropical cyclones per season, and that's now uh, dropped well below 10 into about eight tropical cyclones per season as of the last couple of years. With the only above average season uh, as of late being uh, the previous season in 2024, where we had 11 tropical cyclones develop, the last time we had a number of uh, 10 or above developing in a tropical cyclone season was back in 2005, another very active season there. Now, it's important to note that when we have El Nino conditions, we never have above average tropical cyclone numbers. In fact, we sometimes have 
have significantly below average tropical cyclone numbers, such as 2015, which was the least active Australian tropical cyclone season on record. So whilst we aren't looking at an El Nino this year, the long-term suggestion looks at 2026-27 being an El Nino year, which means likely to see below average tropical cyclone numbers next season. But for this season coming, everything is coming together for a significant tropical cyclone season. These are the, the, the names that we're going to be looking at for our tropical cyclones this year, starting off with Fina, followed by Grant, Haley, Iggy, Jenna, Kochi, Lorna, Mitchell, Narelle, Aran, Peter, and Riordan. If you hear those names, listen out closely, because that means a tropical cyclone is a brewing. We're likely to get through at least eight of these names at this tropical cyclone season, with likely four or five of those becoming severe tropical cyclones, and at least one of them is expected to be a landfalling tropical cyclone. Every single season in recorded history has had a landfalling tropical cyclone, so this year we're almost practically guaranteed to see another landfalling tropical cyclone just based purely off precedence. And this is a look at our map here that I have uh, curated. So we've got three hotspots, of course, that being in the Coral Sea over in the Northern Territory, including the Gulf of Carpentaria, and then offshore into the Indian Ocean towards the Northwest of WA. And you can see I've tagged when these areas are most likely to be at their most active. Now we always see an uptick in tropical low slash tropical cyclone activity through November and December offshore from Western Australia. And considering the negative Indian Ocean dipole event, this season is likely to be no different. We're also looking at February to April being a big month, uh, a big couple of months across Western Australia. Late season tropical cyclone activity offshore from Western Australia can get extreme and pretty much every season in the last decade has thrown at us a category four or five strength severe tropical cyclone in the last couple of months of tropical cyclone season. Sometimes they even go for the West Australian coastline. You can see the likely tracks that they are expected to take. This season, again, looking like it is going to be a big recurve year where they stay well away from the West Australian coastline. But particularly as we get out towards late March and April, where conditions begin to pull these tropical cyclones closer to the Australian mainland, tropical cyclone landfalls do become a whole lot more likely. And then into the Northern Territory, tropical low activity looks to be very active through January, especially through late January and into early February, as a monsoonal burst is expected around that time. And we may see a weak tropical cyclone get spun out towards Darwin or into the Gulf of Carpentaria around that time period as well. But generally speaking, into the Timor Sea and through the Gulf of Carpentaria, it's normally a pretty quiet region of the Australian basin. Now, the Coral Sea, definitely a talking point considering what happened last year. No activity apart from Tropical Cyclone Alpha, but what a cyclone that was going for the Brisbane City area. Whilst it's impossible to reasonably predict where tropical cyclones are going to be making landfalls, we cannot be saying if there's going to be another Brisbane landfall, and chances are that that's not going to happen for a long, long time. It is important to note that we do have everywhere right down to the Fraser Coast, including Harvey Bay and Bundaberg, on notice for tropical low slash tropical cyclone activity for December and the month of February. A bit of a dry spot in January and March, but February especially looking like a big month, particularly out to the central Coral Sea, which means a big tropical cyclone could be thrown at the Queensland coastline, and it could jump a little bit further south than we normally do expect, particularly with a strong negative southern annular mode bias that we're expecting through our southern uh, summer months this tropical cyclone season. That could drag tropical cyclones that develop into the Coral Sea much further south than usual. So of course, as always, the entire Coral Sea coastline, right from the top of the Cape York Peninsula and Thursday Island down to the Fraser Coast, is on notice for tropical cyclone activity, but that hotspot still lies through the North Queensland coastline, and particularly through far North Queensland, with strong tropical low slash tropical cyclone activity forecast through December, and also strong chances and signals now beginning to develop through early February as well. And I've seen quite Quite a lot of very reliable long-range forecast models pointing at landfalls uh, or at land impacting tropical low or tropical cyclone events through parts of the Queensland coastline between Townsville right down to the Fraser coastline in February and that is definitely a feature that I want to keep very close tabs on in the next couple of months. Let's talk about that rainfall outlook because that is equally important when we're talking about uh, tropical cyclone activity. When we have that above average rainfall it, it is very much indicative of tropical low slash tropical cyclone activity. So this is a look at the Australian region, those greens and blue shadings indicate above average rainfall and those yellow and red shadings indicate below average rainfall. So you can see these rainfall anomalies here still strongly in the positive offshore from Western Australia as we get out through the month of November. That's typically when, like I said, low pressure system and cyclone activity begins to ramp up in this part of Western Australian waters and this season is going to be no different. We've already seen a tropical low in the last week develop offshore from the Cocos Keeling Islands and that is expected to continue as we get out towards the second and the third week of November. Nothing yet in the way of rumbles through the Coral Sea and generally speaking we can start to make those long-range projections about now. The Coral Sea doesn't begin to get itself warmed up until late December and early January in terms of cyclone activity, I generally find. In fact, Cyclone Jasper of 2023 was actually a very early start for tropical cyclone activity into the Coral Sea. Normally, we're waiting until January to start to see cyclone activity into the Coral Sea. 
a strong cyclone activity at that. You can see December's a big month in terms of low pressure system and monsoon activity. We're definitely looking at a monsoonal burst happening through mid to late December. That will likely result in the low pressure system or cyclone into the Coral Sea and multiple low pressure systems in the Timor Sea, which could go on to, ev uh, to eventually impact the northern parts of the Kimberley region and parts of the Northern Territory as well. Like I said, January, a big month into the Timor Sea and through the Gulf of Carpentaria as well. Lots of rainfall is on the forecast up there, and this will also carry over into the Coral Sea. So not only are we looking at some flooding rainfall events occurring through northern Queensland in the month of January, particularly through late January, we could also be looking at the chance of tropical cyclone activity as well through late January especially. And then February is that big signal month. You can see lots of rainfall and above average rainfall anomalies through the central parts of the Coral Sea. They don't necessarily carry over into the north Queensland coastline, but we can generally extrapolate this and suggest that we are going to be looking at cyclone or low pressure system activity into the Coral Sea, which means that the Queensland threat is most certainly going to be there for February. So whilst it doesn't look like a wet uh, month, February at this point in time for the Queensland coastline, at least as we get out towards late February, early February is expected to start off quite strong in terms of rainfall, uh, particularly at this point in time with what the models are suggesting. We could definitely be talking about a big signal occurring in uh, uh, late February in terms of low pressure system or cyclone activity after about the 10th of the month and so on. And then March and April become the West Australian waters month. You can see again that's uh, third monsoonal burst expected to occur into section three or section four with the Madden Julian Oscillation coming through and that will put tropical low or tropical cyclone activity offshore from the West Australian coastline. And this carries through March into April and then also in towards May, we generally see low pressure system activity carry over in towards the waters of Western Australia. A quintessential tropical cyclone season, it's gonna be no different from last season's by the looks of things, lots of activity over in the West Australian waters and isolated activity into the Coral Sea, but whatever does develop looks to be either very messy and disorganized in nature and bringing a lot of rainfall, or it's going to be quite strong uh, in nature like we saw with Cyclones Jasper back in 2023 and Cyclone Alfred of uh, earlier this year. There's really not going to be a bit in between for the Coral Sea, I feel. I don't think we're going to see much in the way of Category 1, 2 or 3 strength tropical cyclones. There are either going to be messy tropical lows or very much borderline cases of tropical cyclones, particularly into the Coral Sea, but also as well for Western Australia, or they're going to be absolutely whopper storms that throw out some incredible intensification and uh, present us with some incredible displays of uh, nature's fury out into the Australian waters. The conditions are just primed for these sort of setups. So we're really watching this situation quite closely, particularly over in Queensland. There's lots of signals for above average rainfall this season, which will come in the form of tropical lows, particularly through January and then as well in towards February. And also that tropical cyclone activity through uh, late, uh, early February as well that we've mentioned through the Coral Sea. And then the West Australian water is expected to be firing on all cylinders as as well. And of course, in terms of numbers, like I said, a tropical cyclone is expected this season, at least that's what my projection is, could be plus or minus two from that number. It's definitely not going to be an above average season. We're not expecting more than 11 tropical cyclones, but it's also not going to be a quiet season either. And a lot of those systems, if not most of them, are expected to eventually become severe tropical cyclones of category three proportions or stronger. Now, it goes without saying, all tropical cyclones pose significant hazards to the Australian population. If you are in the firing line, it doesn't matter if it's a one or a five they could throw out incredible rainfall, bring lots of storm surge and blow down trees and power lines as well. So all tropical cyclones do pose a hazard. Make sure that you use the next couple of weeks to get your cyclone emergency kits and plans in place, particularly if you live through Northern Australia. And this includes the North Queensland coastline, Mackay, Townsville, Cairns, also for Darwin in the Northern Territory and through much of Northern Western Australia towards the North of Exmouth inclusive. Lots of tropical cyclone activity once again expected this season. It's gonna be a long one. It's going to be a busy one. And if you want the latest and most up-to-date information, then make sure you're following my page over on Facebook and my channel here over on YouTube for the most frequent and up-to-date uh, advice and warnings in regards to this tropical cyclone season that is upcoming. I'll have more videos like this one in the coming weeks, particularly as we begin to know more of these tropical cyclones or more about these tropical cyclones. But I do hope you found this video enjoyable and informative. And if you have, then please, you consider also leaving a like. A massive thank you to the channel's sponsors and subscribers as well. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them and their support is, as always, massively appreciated. And particularly going into this cyclone season, they've been able to grant me access to some much more premium uh, services as well to be able to give you the latest and greatest information here over on the Cyclones Oz Network. But thank you so much to all of those names. They are on screen right now. And thank you so much for watching this video. I'll have more information to come in the coming couple of weeks, as mentioned, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.